morning students we are discussing on payment material and characterization previously we have seen different types of payment we have that was uh, flexible payment and rigid payment and today we will learn that those different layers from which we are constructing the payment that layers consist different materials and what these materials are that we will discuss in today's session so let's start the session pavement layers consist different different materials those different materials are as per the construction of that different layers if we see the cross section of the pavement then we are this much of layers that is embankment subgrade soil sub base layer base layer binder course and the surface course so starting with the initial layer that is the subgrade and the embankment that particular layer consists different soils the above layer that is the subbase layer that consists the different aggregates while talking about the base layer it also a granular layer which consists of different types of aggregate different size of aggregate after the base layer we have binder cores and the surface cores in which we generally use aggregate plus binder material generally this aggregate and binder material mix are used in binder cores to spread the layer of prime coat and tech coat why in the surface cores we generally use a pure binder material so that particular layer get proper finishing so let's start the study of the first material that we are using for the pavement construction and that particular material that is the subgrade soil so as we previously see that this pavement consists of different different materials and these materials are have their associated properties have their own associated properties and their reactions determine the properties of the resultant pavement thus a good understanding of such materials that how they are uh, characterized and how they perform these are the fundamentals that we need to understand while we are constructing the pavement so starting with that subgrade soil we can say a subgrade soil is an accumulation or deposit of earth material that derive naturally from disintegration of rocks or decay of vegetation that the soil that can be excavated readily with power equipment in the field or we can say disintegrated by gentle mechanical equipments so what is subgrade it is a supporting soil beneath the pavement that is called as a subgrade this subgrade has two different types the first that is the natural subgrade and the compacted subgrade now what is natural sub subgrade an undisturbed soil with the pavement that generally called as a natural subgrade while a compacted subgrade is the soil that compacted by controlled movement of heavy compactors so this was all about the soil definition the subgrade soil definition now the next that is some desirable properties of the subgrade soil we all know that if we are using any material that particular material should fulfill some desirable properties and for subgrade soil those desirable properties are the first is stability next is permanency of strength next is incompressibility the good drainage minimum change in volume and ease of compaction this are the desirable properties of the subgrade soil so let's talk in detail of this desirable properties so starting with the first one that is the stability now stability that means the resistance to pavement deformation under the loads that is generally known as the stability of the pavement now this stability can be or are 
affected by few factors and those factors are vehicle and traffic factor that also affect the stability of subgrade soil the next is moisture of soil next is climatic conditions that climate factor also affect the stability of soil now particular the type of that particular soil it's also affect and the stress distribution so this five factors those affect the stability of the soil the stability of subgrade soil that can be improved by soil stabilization sometimes the thickness of various layers is increased to improve the stability of the soil or to improve the stability of that particular structure now when a road is constructed in an embankment at that situation the factor of safety for the slope stability that should be considered as a 1.5 as per the irc recommendation indian road congress recommendation the side slope for road that is in embankment is equal to the 1 in 2 that is 1 is for vert vertical and the 2 is for horizontal that is required why in cutting slope of 1 is to 1 to 0.5 is to 1 is provided so this is all about the stability of the subgrade soil the next is permanency of strength the subgrade soil that must possess the sufficient bearing capacity and the shear strength the applied stress on the subgrade that is very low when it compared to its bearing capacity and the deformation happens due to load that would be elastic and fully recovered when the load is released the next is incompressibility the property of soil due to which a decrease in volume that occurs under compressive forces that is generally known as the compressibility of soil now incompressibility of soil subgrade that is desirable as the compression of soil due to the application of flows may cause the differential settlement and failure of pavement surface so this would be one of the desirable property of subgrade soil and that is incompressibility the next is good drainage it is essential to avoid excessive moisture tension and to reduce the potential frost action the poor drainage that cause waves and corrugation in some clay soil the variation in moisture content causes considerable change in volume of subgrade that causing the failure of pavement now sometimes excessive moisture in the soil that will also cause a considerable lowering of its stability and the pavement at that moment the pavement is likely to fail due to the subgrade failure now increase in moisture causes reduction in strength of stabilized soil and in case of rigid pavements the presence of water in the fine separated soil that will also cause due to the mud pumping so this is all about that the good drainage is most essential when you are provide uh, when you are using a particular soil if this soil does not contain that good drainage property at that moment it will store some amount of water in it and that will cause the failure of that particular pavement after good drainage the next property that is minimum volume changes now minimum volume changes will ensure the minimum variation in differential expansion and the differential strength values the expansive soil or we can say the black cotton soil as a subgrade material are very poor as these soils are expensive in nature also and such soils should be removed by excavation and separate shall be prepared by the granular soil so that it will give also the better strength and also it will 
have the minimum volume change property. The next desirable properties that is ease of compaction. Now, ease of compaction that ensures higher dry density and strength under particular type and amount of compaction. The granular soils that can be compacted easily by giving higher dry density and the strength. So this is all about the desirable property of soil. The next question that arises that is what are the different type of soil that we can use as a subgrade soil or we are using as a subgrade soil. The wide range of soil types are available as a highway construction. A survey of locally available materials and the soil types that are conducted in India that revealed wide variety of soil types like gravel, muram and naturally occurring soft aggregates which can be used in the road construction. So broadly we can say the soil types can be categorized as a laterite soil, muram that is also known as the red soil, the desert sands, alluvial soils, clay soil in that including the black cotton soil. So first we will discuss on the gravel. Gravel are coarse material, those with the particle size under 2.36 millimeter with the little or no fines contributing to cohesion of materials. So these are the gravel sands or gravel soils. Here in the picture you can see these are the particles of about 2.36 mm size. So these are generally considered as a gravel soils. The next is Mura. These are the products of decomposition and weathering of pavement rock. Usually these are similar to gravel except gravel soils except presence of higher content of fines. So generally the gravel soils and the mura both are almost similar but the difference is that in mura it contained higher amount of fine soils. Fine soils that means the smaller particles. So mura particularly consists number of much number of smaller particles in it. So this is all the difference of gravel and the mura. The next that is silt. Now silt are finer than the sand and brighter in color as compared to the clay soil and it exhibit the little cohesion. When a lump of silty soil that mix with the water that alternatively squeezed and tapped that a shiny surface that makes its appearance and thus it is specific property of this particular soil. So if we want to enhance the appearance of that particular layer if you provide a shiny surface at that moment particular silt sands or silt soils we generally used. The next that is the clay soil. Clay soils are the finer than silts. Clay soils exhibit stickiness and high strength when it's dry and show no dilatancy. Now what is dilatancy? Dilatancy is the volume change that observed in granular materials when they are subjected to the shear deformation. Generally the black cotton soil and the other expensive clays exhibit swelling and the shrinkage property. But paste of clay with the water when it get rubbed between the fingers that leaves strain which is not observed in the silt. So this is the difference in between silt and clay. So these are general types of uh, subgrade soils that are available when you are providing a subgrade. The next is the taste on soils. Which and what are the tastes that to be done on the subgrade soil? 
to evaluate the strength property of the soil few tests has to be performed on the separate soil and those tests are shear test bearing test and the penetration test so let's briefly discuss on this test the first is shear test shear tests are usually carried out on the relatively small soil samples and generally it performed in the laboratory in order to find out the strength property of the soil a number of representative samples from the different locations of that particular study area are collected and then tested some of the commonly known shear tests those are the direct shear test triaxial compression test and unconfined compression test so this commonly these three tests are used for performing the shear test the next is bearing test bearing test are a loading test those are carried out on the subgrade soil on the site with a load bearing area the result of the bearing test are influenced by variation in the soil properties within the stressed soil mass and hence the overall stability of the part of the soil mass stressed that could be studied the next is the penetration test and it may be considered as a small scale bearing test in which the size of the loaded area is relatively much smaller and the ratio of the penetration to the size of the loaded area is much greater than the ratio in the bearing test the penetration test are generally carried out in the field or we can also carry out it in the laboratory but generally we prefer it on the field so these all are the tests of the subgrade soil and with this we are concluding our today's session on the pavement material and its characterization thank you so much students for your kind attention